everyone's Charlie Veach. It's Monday the 23rd of August 2021 and uh, nothing particularly terrible to talk about which is great. Um, today's video is all about love, gratitude, community, brotherhood, fraternity, uh, loyalty, sacrifice and uh, agape, the ancient Greek word for unconditional love. Now I've uh, as an imperfect being who um, cannot, because I'm not good enough, accomplish unconditional love. Uh, the universe makes it a bit easier for us humans. It uh, allows us to meet and fall in love with people. It allows us to have our own parents. It allows us to have our own children. And when they're your kids, they're so much easier to love. Oh my God, I mean, this video, let's dedicate it to my three beautiful children, baby Isaac, Maya Leela, and Leonidas. The reason for my existence, the purpose for getting up in the morning, the three people I think about all the time. And it's so fantastically ironic and every parent watching this will know. So you come out to a quiet spot, get the digger away. Can you hear that? Can you hear the digger? I hope not. Look how quiet it is. Every parent will know you, you miss your kids like crazy. And then half an hour later, after looking after them, you're like, whoa, I need a break. That's just the way it is. Everything's like that, isn't it? But um, you don't really need a break. What you're probably asking for is your kids to bloody settle down a little bit and allow you to gather your thoughts rather than being the runaround butler. But it's a great job. I'm very grateful to be butler to my three children. I'm very grateful to have fallen in love and to have had three beautiful, healthy, amazing children who um, it's almost difficult to talk about them because they're so awe-inspiring and so loved and so perfect that it kind of you kind of well up a bit. You kind of go, oh, I love my kids. <laughs> and um, I want to give you guys some more homework whilst we're here in the forest. Um, I meet so many people and what I love about people is that every single person I meet and chat to, there's something incredibly unique about their situation. There's something incredibly talented or creative about something they do. It's meant to be a quiet forest. <laughs> Everyone I meet has got something and um, another one as well. When you dig beneath the surface, when you get to know people a bit better after first meeting, you find out some of their incredibly personal, deep struggles. Now, if we have this vibe, this idea, this thought in our minds that we've been hard done by, people have treated us badly, it's not fair. Who are we to get treated like this? And it makes you angry, it makes you distrustful. It makes you ungrateful. It makes you angry and bitter for the small scraps you've had from the dinner table of life. But that's the wrong way to be, guys. Um, every single great love story, every single reconnection, every single atonement between human beings on Earth that were once enemies or f drifted away or drifted apart or don't trust each other anymore or I've always felt some sort of rivalry or, yeah, hatred. You, as in you watching this right now, you can't leave it to the other person to make the first move. You'll never uh, reconcile. You need to make the first move. And if they're watching this, they need to make the first move. There is no time to wait. Today, this hour, five minutes, pause the video, do it right now. Phone your mum. Phone your dad, phone your brother or your sister, phone your cousins, phone your friend you went to, to school with that you fell out over that girl in 2007 or whatever, yeah? Just phone them, connect with them, tell them you're sorry. For your elderly parents, tell them that they did a great job. Tell them that you're grateful for the life they gave you and forgive them for anything that you consider unfair or my parents didn't do this, didn't do that for me. Forgive them 
As a parent, I know just how hard life is. As a parent, as a father, I know just how existentially difficult the world is. And trying to, to drag children up in this hard world, I know the struggles my parents had. I know the struggles your parents had. So forgive them. Even if your parents may or may not have done something pretty bad, forgive them. They made a mistake. They were caught up in some bullshit at the time. They were unable to not make that mistake. Forgive them. Tell them you're grateful. For all your friends you've not seen in a long time, phone them, email them, send them photographs, send them a little five second video of how you are. Tell them you want to reconnect. The only thing that is real on this planet is the heartfelt communication between individual people and everything else is the the detail the kind of um the background filler we have in between the connections of human beings trying to attain some sort of community now remember you're free to not do any of this it's your free will you can remain bitter and angry and miserable you can remain dour for the rest of your life. You maybe will not smile ever again, but trust me on the sunscreen. No, trust me on the reconciliation. Um, I don't ask you guys to do things that I don't practice myself. I don't come to you with uh, uh, bad evidence of failed attempts. I come to you with an open heart and uh, a sincerity that sometimes I can get upset at that, um, no one is going to come for you. No one is going to be your Morpheus and come and get you out of your boring job to go on a hero's journey into the belly of the beast to rescue someone. That's not going to happen for you. You have to do it yourself. There is no point waiting for someone to come and give you a great life. There's no point twiddling your thumbs thinking your great romance will come. There's no point getting angry that the last three people rejected you when you should pick yourself off the ground, dust yourself off and try again, try again. Because if at first you don't succeed, just, um, yeah, poor Alia died in that plane crash, poor thing. But that was a good song with a good message. If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again, dust yourself off and try again, try, she even repeats it, try again. And there's that great Chumbawamba song. Forgive me for going into songs from the 90s. Uh, I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never gonna keep me down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never gonna keep me down. Great message, and it's true. You think anyone, and look, I'll speak for myself here. You think I managed to meet someone and fall in love and have three beautiful children and it just happened like, no, my God, the amount of rejections, disappointments, being stood up by, by people, um, being told that you're pathetic by people, being told that you're not good looking enough or whatever enough. Oh my goodness. I, I remember at the age of uh, 16, trying to date this American girl. And she said, sorry, you're not virile enough. I didn't even know what virile meant. Had to look it up. It means manly. She was like, you're not manly enough. And that, that shit stings. That really stings when you're an adolescent. So what I'm trying to say is I, I didn't get to be someone who could just speak openly about my innermost feelings sincerely, just off the cuff. It takes a lot of trial and error. It takes a lot of tears, blood and sweat of really dark night of the souling it and realizing that you're just as shit as everyone else. But on the flip side, you're just as important as anyone else. Your life has value. Your dignity matters. Your good humor and your soul should never be insulted and put down and humiliated. But people are all doing that to each other. And we take it personally. You start to um, internalize the terrible things people say to you. But it's time for that to stop. Your homework will help with this. Phone your mum, phone your dad, reconnect with your friend, send pictures of your babies to your long lost friend. 
tell them how much you miss them. Because I'll promise you one thing, and I'll promise you this from the bottom of my heart, they're feeling the exact same way, the same insecurities, the same worries, the same shit of, I'm not good enough, no one will like me. But you like them, and they'd like you if you manage to set aside the snakes in their heart and get to their inner core and say, look, James, Bob, Sarah, David, David, high five. Just tell them. Now, I'm going to try and review this video and hope it makes some sense. I think you do get the gist of what I'm getting at, is that every great story, every great journey, every great love affair starts with you, not them, you, taking the leap of faith. They call it falling in love for a re falling in love. You don't rise up into love. I'm going to paraphrase a bit of Alan Watts here, so forgive me. But isn't life about rehashing and remixing greater people who have come before you? They call it falling in love because it's an act of faith. In fact, taking a step forward is an act of faith. Like, I'm here in the forest, someone could have set a trap up. I don't know if I'm going to fall into bloody sharpened bamboo sticks covered in shit, like the Viet Cong used to do. Okay, terrible example, but every step forward is a leap of faith because you don't know if the floor is going to cave in and you're going to fall over and break your leg or your spine. It's crazy. When you love someone, that, that fall, that the removal of your ego because all of a sudden you're so vulnerable and when you're vulnerable you can be utterly eviscerated you can be destroyed but you know what what kind of life is it you're a big sailing ship you stay in the port you stay in the dry docks no you gotta get your ship out there you gotta have those battles you gotta fucking fight napoleon's fucking naval army you gotta capture that spanish flag you gotta lead from the front you gotta be fatally wounded at the battle of trafalgar and then you will have your own apotheosis. You know, look up that painting, pause the video and look up a painting called Apotheosis of Lord Nelson. That's how much they respected that guy for getting out there. And as a metaphor, as a metaphysic, as a simile, as an analogy, as an archetype for what Lord Nelson did. Great first, Horatio, Horatio, committed Christian. Not that that had anything to do with uh, anything, just uh, I'm telling you because he was. And, uh, to end this video, I think we'll do 13 minutes. In the words of William Shakespeare, a coward dies a thousand deaths, and the brave and valiant never taste of death but once. This is Charlie Veach from the Sunny Forest. Thank you very much for watching.